Hi everybody and welcome back to Lost Genre Reddit Stories. A quick info before we begin. Today's video has two stories and both of them have updates. Now let's get started with the first one. This post is from the subreddit Relationships and it's by user Get a Goddamn Job. My 24 female significant other 24 male of two years. He doesn't seem to think getting a job is important and it's killing the relationship for me. Alright, so I guess some background on myself first. I grew up poor, like on the verge of homelessness for most of my childhood kind of poor. My mother and older brother both worked two jobs, busting their asses just to make ends meet. I started my first official job, I had been doing odd jobs to help out since I was 13, on my 16th birthday. Since then, I haven't gone more than three months without having some kind of a job, be it waiting tables or cleaning houses. Basically, I was raised with the principle that not having a job or working is just not an option. It was difficult, but both my brother and myself were able to balance school and work. And since graduating college, I've been able to provide for myself entirely. It's a massive source of pride for me. On the other hand, there's my significant other. His family is most definitely not mega rich, but to my knowledge, they have never been anywhere near the financial situation of my childhood. Both of his parents had fairly lucrative careers. They're both since retired. They have always had a lovely big home and food on the table, and my significant other was never expected to work or get a part-time job. Today, he's still living at home. Now that we've both graduated with our respective degrees, I'm currently working at an entry-level position in my career field. I have no delusions about myself or the current job market. I realize I got lucky getting a job, and a lot of equally qualified graduates are having serious problems getting jobs. But I do think my work ethic played a huge part. They may have been crappy service related jobs, but they taught me responsibility and how to be a good worker. I'm not ashamed of doing work that's beneath me because it's made me into the dedicated and hardworking person I am today. My significant other is having a much harder time finding work, or that was the excuse a few months after graduation last year. And I understand, his major doesn't lend itself to a whole lot of career options at the moment and he got extremely dejected. But nearly a year later, he was still dejected. He's only sent out two, two applications in almost a year. I've brought up numerous times that he can always apply to a part-time whatever job while still searching for his career job. He always sounds like he agrees, but still, no applications have been sent. I've offered to ask around at my past workplaces and see if they're hiring, and he doesn't seem interested. On some level, I get not wanting to take a job that's beneath him or his degree, as he's mentioned. But guess what? I was able to suck it up and do it. Now, here's the pressing issue. We had plans to move in together once my lease is up this year, but I've all but given up on that happening, and he knows that I was really counting on him because my current apartment is now owned by a new landlord who's raising the rent ridiculously high, and if we don't move into a place together, I'll need to majorly downsize on my own. And to make it really clear, because I know how what I just said sounds, I realize that it isn't his responsibility to take care of me or my living arrangements. Still, we had planned and agreed to do it, and he very well knows that him not getting a job, any job, is going to put me in a crappy situation. And I know on some level that he cares about that, but apparently not enough to suck it up and get a job. I don't like ultimatums and I've tried to be as understanding and empathetic about his situation as possible. But his lack of taking initiative and lack of trying is seriously killing the rest of the otherwise perfect relationship for me. I'm starting to just feel angry when I look at him. I've tried to bring this up to him, but he just gets defensive and tells me not to worry, that he's working on it. At what point do I say enough is enough? Am I not being supportive enough? Am I being too hard on him? Any advice would be seriously appreciated. Well, Opie, the first thing I'm going to say before anything else is do not sell yourself short. You weren't lucky to get a job. You earned it. I know the job market is difficult and not everybody gets the job that they want, but you were not lucky. Again, you earned it. Don't forget that. Now, regarding the situation with your boyfriend, it absolutely sucks. Yes. 
And I don't think you're being harsh on him. I think you're just asking him to follow through on what he'd agreed upon. And if that doesn't happen, well, that is a red flag and that's something you need to talk to him about. I would say the point of no return is where you don't have any other choice but to sign a lease for yourself or some other apartment. You've tried being supportive, you've tried helping him find jobs, and he doesn't seem interested at all. He just doesn't want to do it because it's beneath him, whatever. You can't keep trying to compensate for him, OP. That must be exhausting and very frustrating. And that's why every time you look at him, you get angry. Because you are starting to resent him. OP, in my opinion, the next time you talk to him, you need to talk directly about this without sugarcoating, without beating around the bush on the topic. And that is that in this point in time, you guys are on different pages. You have different priorities, which makes you kind of incompatible. So the question that you both need to answer together is, can you both get on the same page and how that would look? And if the answer is no, then you need to part ways. And what do you guys think about this whole situation? What would you do if you were in OP shoes? Let me know in the comment section. And now let's move on to the community comments to see what they said. Deleted says, it sounds like your values just don't match up. You value being self-sufficient, but he doesn't see the point of supporting himself with a crappy job when his parents are willing to prop him up. Neither viewpoint is necessarily wrong, although I personally have a lot more respect for yours. Me too. But if you want someone who shares this value with you, you might be out of luck in this relationship. People change, but only when they want to. When someone changes for you, they almost always end up resenting you or reverting back. Let me reiterate that this isn't really about the specific issue of him not working. It's about what kind of person you want to be with. And OP responds, thank you so much for your response and I agree on your point on different values. I'd be lying if I said I never get frustrated and think to myself, he's just being lazy. But you're right, it truly is a difference in values and I have to decide if this is a deal breaker issue. Kodachi Kuno says, I gotta ask, if he's not currently working or going to school, what the F does he do all day? Also, maybe it's just my values, but I think kids and the parents who make this possible, who never have any job until they graduate from college, are doing themselves a huge disservice and are really unattractive as professional employees. I'm in a position where I often am assigned to train or mentor college hires, and the few that fit this profile are still learning super basics like how to show up to work every day on time and how to present yourself professionally. And OP responds, he tells me that he tweaks his resume, searches for jobs online, works out, cleans, does housework, etc. Which is totally acceptable, but how much resume perfecting or job searching can you be doing in almost a year with no application sent out? And I agree completely. I'm the type that even if I won the lottery or became a millionaire, if I ever have children, they will work a part-time job. Any job. May Graith says, how is his work ethic other than an actual paying job? Because I can totally see him as the type to not lift a finger for housework because it's beneath him. And OP responds, that's a really good question to bring up. He actually has no issue with housework. He's much cleaner than I am, but we don't live together so it's not like he's cleaning up my apartment for me. And he was extremely hard working with his schoolwork his final semester. Additional information from OP's comments. So for those of you asking about dating dynamics, I've paid for most dates. He chips in at times, but I'm guessing it's whenever his parents give him money. We haven't been going out much recently for several reasons unrelated to money, but it's certainly a factor. I don't want to throw a pity party for myself, but my life has been hard up until now. I've opened up to him about it more than I have to anyone else in my life. If my significant other had lived the life I've lived, I would do anything, any crap job to make sure he felt secure and to just take some of that pressure off. So I can't help but feel a little offended deep down. He's too good to wait tables, but he was fine with me doing it for over half of our relationship. I don't know, I might be reading into that too much, but it's just a little extra sting to an already sore issue, you know? I'm starting to realize that this is a fundamental difference in values, and while neither is right or wrong, I would need to make a choice. I know it's cliche and everyone on this sub says it, but this really is the only issue in an otherwise perfect relationship. I love and want to be with him, 
but I can't change him, so I need to decide if this is something I can live with. But the not trying is really the crux of the issue for me. I understand the job market is awful now and I would be perfectly happy if he wasn't able to find work but was at least filling and sending out applications every week. Alright, well the community definitely gave OP a lot of support and things to think about and I gotta say, personally, I think OP is awesome. She sounds like a person with such drive and such a clear mentality, it is admirable. Unlike, I'd say, her boyfriend's attitude, which is not admirable. The thing is, like OP says, not finding a job is okay, not trying, that's what's not okay. Anyway, it's time to move on with the update to see what OP did next and how this story ends, but of course before that, here's another one of my playlists for you to enjoy after this video. Now let's move on with that update. So after posting, I had another serious talk with my significant other about his work ethic and how it was poisoning the relationship for me. I explained that his life choices were his own, but if he wanted to be with me, then he'd have to step up and get some sort of a job. Any job. He took it surprisingly well and explained that he too was frustrated with the situation. Apparently, his parents had been putting a good deal of pressure on him to not get a part-time job. Huh? His mother in particular. Without revealing too much personal information, his family culture is pretty accepting of mama's boy syndrome. Think Mediterranean, not trying to point any fingers. Basically, that's where he got the attitude that specific work was beneath him. Plus, his older brother had lived at home well into his late 20s. Now, I love his family. They've been nothing but warm and welcoming to me. His parents already refer to me as their future daughter, which is so lovely. But still, I told him flat out that his parents gave him terrible advice. I honestly don't think his mother means him or me any harm or malice, but he is very much the baby of the family to his mother, so there is still a bit of overprotective behavior there. But he's definitely made some serious efforts towards becoming a self-sufficient person in the past few months. I also pointed out that his brother was in an entirely different position as he was working on a PhD then. Now, the breaking point for us came about a month and a half ago. Out of the blue, my company offered me a position halfway across the country. This forced us to have a very serious come to Jesus type of talk about our relationship and our future. I told him plainly that I didn't want to rush him, but we needed to either work out this problem or I would be taking the position. Well Reddit, that certainly lit a fire under him. Every day he would send me pictures of applications he was sending out, around 3 to 5 a day. Not amazing, but certainly better than 2 a year. He is defying his entire upbringing and parental pressure to step up. And honestly, once I got that job offer, I figured we'd just sort of fizzle out because I seriously did not expect him to put forth any effort. Now, he's the one talking about our future together. I honestly felt bad, like I was forcing him to become an adult, so to speak, before he was ready. But I think we both started seeing it more as, what do we want long term and how do we get there? Anyway, guess what? Within two weeks, he got a job. It's a part-time, dead-end job, but it's a damn job. Once he got his first paycheck, he raved about how rewarding it felt to earn it for himself. Then he took me out to dinner and paid. Now, before anybody hears wedding bells, just know that I'm definitely not moving in with him until he can pull his own weight. I'm certainly not a finance expert, but I understand the ins and outs of income versus expenses, which is one area I've been able to advise him a bit on. I've also explained credit and why it's essential. Honestly, I think it's something his parents should have taught him, but from what I've seen over the past few months, he has made real strides in becoming an independent person, which I can respect. We'll see what happens as far as moving in together, but I'm definitely more happy than I was four months ago. So here we are. That position across the country ended up being a bad fit for several reasons, so I stayed here and actually got a promotion recently. He's been asking for my advice about saving and financial independence, which I'm more than happy to give. We're taking it one step at a time, but we've definitely taken these steps in the right direction. 
Yes, OP, I absolutely agree with you. All steps taken in the right direction. This is a happy update. And I absolutely agree with your boyfriend. In my opinion, there are just a few feelings that come close to the one that you get when you earn something, when you've worked your ass off to achieve something and you get it. Not because somebody decided to give it to you, not because you were lucky, but because you earned it. I don't know, maybe it's just me, but I just love that feeling. So here's wishing you and your boyfriend, OP, the best in the future. Hopefully you guys can keep working together and you keep moving in the right direction. Take care and thank you for sharing. Now let's move on to the next post that like I said in the beginning also has an update. This post is from the subreddit Relationships and it's by user Gfanime Throwaway. My 21 male girlfriend, 20 female of 6 months, suddenly wants me to give up watching anime. After my classes, I like to watch some anime in my dorm occasionally. I finished an episode when my girlfriend texted me asking if I was watching anime, to which I replied yes. She then told me that she thinks that now I'm over 20 years old, it's time to give up watching it. I kind of laughed it off telling her that I enjoyed it, but then she said that she was being really serious. I haven't responded yet and I'm dreading when I see her later. A lot of my hobbies are rooted in anime. My friends, going to conventions, cosplay, merchandise I like. And she's known about my hobbies since just a little after we started dating, which is why this feels so out of left field for me. I watch about 8-10 to 10 series a season, which translates to only 1-2 to two episodes a day. This isn't a lot, right? A lot of people might call me a weeb or otaku for considering choosing anime over a girlfriend, but this is a hobby that I've had for most of my life, since 10. Well, OP, the people that would call you a weeb or otaku would be absolutely wrong because it's not about choosing anime over your girlfriend. It's about letting your girlfriend dictate your life. Before telling you that you need to quit watching anime because you're over 20, which it's stupid, by the way, the first question I would ask is, do you have your life together? And if the answer is yes, then you can do whatever the F you want. You can watch 20 episodes a day if you feel like it. As long as you keep up with all of your responsibilities and you are a good and present boyfriend, then yeah, watch as many as you want. Now, if you're skipping class or you're letting your grades fall or whatever, like you don't have your life together, you're actually in trouble or something and you still watch anime without doing something about your life, then yeah, maybe you need to quit anime and start focusing on your life. And then maybe her comment would be welcomed and actually on point but I get the feeling that it's not. OP, I think you need to talk to your girlfriend about this because it's not about anime. It's about a power dynamic in the relationship. And what do you guys think about this situation? What would you do if you were in OP's shoes? Let me know in the comment section and now let's move on to the community comments to see what they said. Recycled Banthus says, I don't doubt that she's serious, but something else is possibly happening here. She's being controlling and trying to dictate that you give up something you enjoy greatly, just on her women's judgment. It shouldn't matter if you both have different tastes and hobbies. It's okay to share interests, but complete commonality is not required. Sometimes it's better when two people have other hobbies. If your work or studies suffer from time spent on anime, that's one thing. But if you get crap done, there's no reason you shouldn't be able to enjoy anime. I recommend that you kindly but firmly stand your ground. She should not ask you to forsake a harmless hobby that brings you joy. If she doesn't drop the demand, she should be dropped. Dora Diamond says, My partner and I are 30 and 28 respectively and love watching anime together. There's nothing childish about it and if you're only watching a couple of episodes a day, it's not like you're being excessive. Maybe talk to her about why she feels anime is for kids and show her some episodes to see if she's open to changing her mind. Either way, I don't think you should give this up for her. A bit not good says, don't put up with that. You could text her like, fellow associate, you knew I was into anime coming into this relationship. It's something I genuinely enjoy and have no intention on dropping. Let's watch Attack on Titan together. If she's going to be crap about it, turn into a mecha bot and step on her house. Additional information from OP's comments. She thinks that all anime is either for kids or guys trying to get their rocks off. While her hobbies constitute spending most of her free time with friends, she also likes makeup, especially tutorials on YouTube and softball. Anyway, I'm cross-posting this to r slash anime and r slash anime suggest to find some series that don't fit into either of those categories that we can enjoy together. Alright, well the community is pretty clear. OP, you can't stand for this and maybe try to bring it to your side, which apparently is what OP wants to do. So let's move on to the update to see how this story ends. 
I talked to her and asked her why she wanted me to quit watching anime because she's known I watched it from day one of our relationship. As it turns out, her parents were very disapproving of anime. Her dad is basically a real life version of the Asian dad meme and they were bad mouthing me when she told them about me and my hobbies. So it turns out that she didn't have any problems with me watching anime, she just wanted to live up to her parents' expectations. I told her that while I understand where she's coming from, she also has to understand that anime is a long time hobby of mine, that it will never get in the way of our relationship, I still get all my responsibilities done and that I will take whatever flack her parents give me when and if I end up meeting them. I also brought up the possibility of watching it together. So at the recommendation of another subreddit, we started watching Nana together. I'm not really expecting her to suddenly fall in love with anime because of this, but it is an excellent way to spend time with two things I really love. Alright OP, problem solved. You talked about it, you got to the bottom of it, and now you guys came together to a determination which is, let's try anime together and if and when their parents grill you, you'll have no problem standing up for yourself. So here's wishing you and your girlfriend the best in the future. Take care and keep enjoying anime together. Thanks for sharing. And that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch it. Now, if you've gotten to this point in the video, I assume that you like these stories that I'm reading out. So here are a couple more that you might enjoy. And if you don't have any time to watch another story right now, save it for later. And also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button.